At work, they asked me what steps I'd take in the event of a fire. Real big ones apparently wasn't the right answer. <laughs> Woo! I'm boiling today. Right, so hello again, everybody. Welcome back. A frequently asked question at the moment is around VPNs. Do I need a VPN? Why do I need one? When would I use one? And what benefits do I get out of them? And there's also reasons that you wouldn't use one as well. So right, that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's crack on. Right, so first of all, what I will ask is comment down below, do you use a VPN? And if so, what do you use it for? And yes, I am in a vest today because I am absolutely melting. It's red hot outside, it's been hitting over 30 degrees Celsius, and I'm sweating my tits off. Right. <laughs> So when it comes to a VPN, just quickly, what is it? A VPN is a virtual private network and it can be used on any device. So you've got Android boxes, Fire TV sticks, Android phones, iPhones, Windows, any device you can use a VPN on. And what a VPN does is it like casts your IP. So your IP address, if your IP address is say 567, when you connect to a VPN server, that will change your IP address to say 678. And although that doesn't seem like a massive benefit, it really does have quite a few benefits and that's what I'm gonna explain in this video as fast as I can. So one thing a VPN does do is whatever website you're visiting, when you're connected to a VPN, your internet service provider can only see that you're connecting to that VPN server. So if you're visiting websites or websites you don't want your ISP to be seeing you visiting, then using a VPN will mask this and they will only be able to see you connecting to that VPN server. So if you're watching a bit of Blue Foot Dads or you're visiting websites you don't want anyone to know you're visiting, a VPN is a way around that. So something I do see frequently mentioned is why do my speeds drop when I'm using a VPN? So my Wi-Fi speeds, my internet speeds, they drop quite dramatically when I connect to a VPN server. And this is as simple as you're adding another step to that connection. So if you're visiting a website, rather than going direct to that website, you go into the VPN server first and then from the VPN server to the website. Now, the majority of the time, it won't kill speeds that much that you can't use whatever you want to use it for. Now, various different VPNs out there, there's hundreds, and all will give you different types of speeds. If you're using a free VPN, your speeds will drop quite dramatically, and most likely, it will become unusable. And this is why a lot of people decide to pay for a premium VPN, because they will give you better speeds. Right, so one of the main benefits when you're using a VPN is having the ability to connect to region lock content. So if I'm in the UK, there's a lot of stuff I can't access in the UK because it's geo-locked to the US. So Sony Crackle, for example, Tubi TV, Voodoo, even US Netflix. US Netflix, you guys get a hell of a lot more content than we do here in the UK or in Europe. And having a VPN and connecting to a USA server allows you to be able to access that content. And to do this, you simply open the VPN that you are using, select a USA server and connect to it, and then your IP address will change and that will think that you're in the US and allow you to access that content. And also, if you're in the US and you want to connect to a UK server, you'll be able to access BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, whereas if you connect to your usual US server or your ISP, then you won't be able to access that content. Now, with IP Vanish, their servers are quite popular, so with your big streaming services like that, more than likely, most of their servers are blocked and you're not able to access that content. But the other VPN, it's called um, Quad VPN, that actually has a dedicated streaming server and that allows you access to your iPlayer and your ITV hub and things like that. And then the streaming service for the US allows you your Netflix and your Voodoo, your Sony Crackle and all those streaming services. And it's not just region lock content that it allows you to do as well, it's also content that's blocked by your ISP, so your internet service provider. I was using a website yesterday, and it's an awesome website. It's like US TV Go. And I was trying to access it off Virgin, 
and I couldn't access it, it was just saying it can't play this video right now. So I connected to a VPN, but I left it as a UK server to see if it was region locked and it wasn't. When I connected to a VPN in the UK, I was able to access that content. So that shows you that your internet service provider is actually blocking some websites and even a lot of links and things on your movies and TV shows websites. Another thing worth mentioning is also if you use apps for free movies, free TV shows, your live TV and things like that, when you're looking for links and you're looking for different streams, your internet service provider can also block these as well as websites. So when you're searching for different links and streams, you may find a lot won't work or you may find not many sure. But by connecting to a VPN, it'll bypass all these blocks by your ISP and you'll be able to find more sources and more links. Not always the case, it isn't always the case, but it is something I've found works in the past. Another big reason people use a VPN is for using torrents. So torrents are a little different to when you're using your normal files that are on a server. If you're streaming directly from that server, it does act to, it is a little bit different. If you're using torrents, you're not only downloading that torrent or downloading that stream, you're actually uploading a portion of it as well. So you're actually seen as distributing it. Now, I know laws on streaming around the world are different from wherever you're from, but once you start to be seen distributing or uploading that content, that's where you're going to get into trouble. So torrenting is a big reason why you need to use a VPN. So if you do use torrents, a VPN is recommended. Another thing as well is going back to ISP blocks, so internet service provider blocking websites and streams, they can also throttle your internet speed. So slow your internet down so you actually experience more buffering, takes longer to load, and they drop your internet speeds and your connection speeds so it doesn't stream back smoothly. Now, there are many factors when it comes to buffering. I'll leave a link in the top corner if you want to go and find out the three main causes. Nine times out of ten, your ISP throttling your speeds won't be the issue, but this could definitely be one of the factors if you've tried everything else. Another huge reason for using a VPN as well is when you're connecting to a public Wi-Fi. Now, the majority of time, these aren't secure, and obviously you've got a lot of connections on these public Wi-Fi. Now, this doesn't make it too difficult for people to start monitoring what you're doing and being able to, like, it's called phishing. And what they can do is access your device and see what you're doing. And they do have the ability to collect data, collect passwords and things like that. Now, this isn't a common thing to happen, but when you do research it, pretty much everyone does say if you're using public Wi-Fi, do make sure that you use a VPN. And this includes when using hotel Wi-Fi's and things as well, because there's so many people connected to that same network. And then this goes in hand with using third party apps and unofficial apps to stop them being able to collect data about you. It's recommended to use a VPN. Now on my website, let's crack on .org, There is a list of free VPNs you can try on there. Now these will kill your speeds by quite a lot. They will slow it down but they may work for you. Although, if you're using a free VPN, nothing comes for free, especially when it comes to data. So nobody actually knows how these people make a free VPN and give it to you for free without you giving anything back. So it is thought that a free VPN actually collects data about you and sells it to another third party. So using a free VPN, do be careful, check the terms, check the policies. And like I said, if you do want a premium VPN, they are $5 a month at the moment. I will leave a link in the description down below. It is an affiliated link, so it does help support the channel, but it does also give you the best offers. Right. I honestly, I'm sweating so bad, it's unbelievable. <laughs> now, if you're not doing any of those things I've just mentioned, then you don't need a VPN. A lot of people do say, well... You need a VPN no matter what these days. It's 100% needed. You better get one. Well, that's kind of like it's, it's not true because I have seen people saying that using a VPN will prevent you from getting hacked. And this isn't really true. Say if you get a spam email and you click on a link, a VPN can't do anything to protect you. And when it comes to hacking, there's not really a lot of things you can do. Using a VPN is more to protect your data to hide you from your IP, so your ISP, sorry, your internet service provider, and allow you to access content 
that you wouldn't usually be able to access. Right. So, if I have missed anything, do comment down below. Like I say, I'm not trying to, like, say you need a VPN. I'm trying to tell you so I can pass this video on to other people when they do ask why a VPN is used, when should you use a VPN, and do you actually need a VPN? So I do look forward to seeing you in the comments section down below. I will say one thing. If you're going out in the sun, do be careful because I didn't think it was that dangerous. But I've had a headache really bad for a few days. And that's all to do with that sun outside. So do be careful. Right, so that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Ta-da! Ta